Barnes & Noble has been put through the ringer over the past five years with various staff changes, store closures, and lack of e-reader releases that would make some raise their eyebrows. In fact, their last e-reader released was over two and a half years ago in May 2019, the Glowlight Plus, not to be confused with the Glowlight Plus that was also released in 2015, which featured an odd design choice. Now it seems that they are back in action with the Glowlight 4. This is a beautiful little e-reader that is harking back to the old design that made the Simple Touch such an amazing e-reader in 2012. Unlike its competitors, they decided not to go bigger than a 6-inch screen as to stand out a little bit amongst the recent releases. It's got the classic raised lowercase n at the bottom to control the glow light and home, power button at the top, fingernail buttons on both sides that can be mapped to switch, and an all-new USB-C port. The modern features don't stop there, coming bundled with 32 gigs, glow light with night mode, and a factory installed glare free and scratch resistant screen protector. It's boasting a soft touch body with an all new extended battery life so you can focus on what really matters, e-reading. The home screen has the top bar, your library in the middle, your store recommended for you, and at the bottom all of your icons that you can navigate to. We'll show you that in a second. Tapping the top left corner will lead you to your account. Here you can manage your payment, your credit cards, your account name, settings, etc. You can press the back button or the home button at the bottom, which is the lowercase n. You can press that at any time if you want to go home. Tapping on the top right corner will bring up your glow light, your Wi-Fi, your night mode, and your battery. If you click on all settings, this actually doesn't have a whole lot of settings. It has Wi-Fi, glow light, library reader, download and storage, and my account. You can click on the down arrow to find a few more things like screen where you can go in and do screen timeout and time where you can simply just choose the actual time. At the bottom this is your library which you are on now. This is the store experience right here. The store experience is very nice. It is very Nook Bookstore-esque in that they've never really changed anything. It looks very straightforward. You have the little carousel in the middle but swiping doesn't do anything. You actually have to use the controls on the side and when you change it doesn't go one by one it refreshes all three so it's just the image of it being a carousel you can click on something and this will give you a look at your purchase decision so you can go into something like that you can buy for that amount free sample and everything is tabbed so if you want to see customer reviews editorial reviews more like this you'll have to switch over the tabs whereas some devices it's all on one page Clicking on this one down below, the open book, just takes you to what you've been reading most recently and what is most recently opened. Clicking on here, this is Barnes & Noble Nook Readouts. It's kind of like Goodreads, it shows editorials and little snippets and excerpts from the Barnes & Noble editors, so you can go here and every day you can read some different things. You can go back, you can go to serial reads, blogs and excerpts, etc. You can press the refresh if you want to refresh everything and it is free to use. Pressing the end button at the bottom will take you home or force a refresh of the entire screen. So that's really nice. Long pressing for more than two seconds will turn off and on the glow light respectively. So that is a way you can quick nav over without having to go to the top bar. When you're in a book, you can swipe, you can tap, and you can long press. If you long press, you'll have to keep your eye on the page at the bottom, whatever page out of whatever page, because you don't really know where you are like the Kindle manga model engine where it shows you how fast you're going through the book. So once you let go, it will refresh. Alternatively, you can double tap the button forward, back, left and right, etc. And this will actually take you chapter by chapter. So it doesn't just turn the pages once or twice, it will actually jump to the next chapter, which is very nice because this allows you to quick nav through the device itself without having to go to the fast nav. Although you could, you can use the bar at the bottom to quick navigate through the unit itself. Tapping in the center will bring up the options up top. If you click on here, you get your text options. You can change the font size, you can change the font style, 
and you can change the font weight so you can have it be thinner, thicker, or regular. You can also do the margins and line spacing and justification and everything changes live in the background. You can see about 40% of the screen behind this little window. Long pressing on the screen will bring up a couple options. You have your dictionary definition down below. You can make a note. We'll bring up the keyboard to show you how it looks. If I write my name like that, it found all the letters and it is one of the few devices using a full QWERTY keyboard with the keys actually staggered properly. So that's really nice. A lot of people just grid them, which isn't natural. You can revisit your notes and highlights right there in the corner as you see that little notepad. Going back to the long press, you do have highlight right there. You do have copy, share, dictionary definition, and you can search in the book itself for other times that that was mentioned. You can jump on that and you can navigate over directly to where it was mentioned. A little bit of a problem with this is that the back button is a little bit hidden underneath the bezel itself right there. So it's actually hard to touch. You have to start on the side and curl your finger over into it because the touch box is so tiny. Tapping the three dots at the top right corner, you get add bookmark, jump to page, find book, and view details. The background is decently white. It is probably one of the whitest backgrounds we've seen, mostly because they're using the latest technology of e-ink carta. The blacks are very black and the contrast between where the blacks end and the whites begin. There's no real mushing or fuzziness of any kind. It's fairly high contrast and it is very sharp. A lot of those fancy features that were in the reading experience with the side buttons don't really work in graphic novels. If you press and hold, it's just going to change the one page. If you press twice, it's just going to change one page. It doesn't go to the next chapter or section or anything like that. The page turns are very fast and you can use your finger as well, of course. You cannot pinch and zoom. There's no pinch and zoom. And if you double tap the middle of the screen, it just kind of fuzzes out and nothing really works. And there's no guided view in that it actually can't go into each individual panel so unfortunately you're gonna be stuck reading a graphic novel with a six inch screen which as you see is fairly small this is a very small experience furthermore there's no zoom options either if you tap the center you get a table of contents right here and if you go back and press the three dots you get view details so that is about it the Nook Glowlight 4 however brings something completely unique that no other device has in that if your device is too cold, it will actually tell you. This is the first time in 17 years of e-paper we have ever seen this on an e-reader before. The glow light is perfectly fine with no major issues anywhere. The only issue being at the very top underneath the bezel. It's a little bit overexposed. And that's because it is a sunken screen and bezel. The cold is very blue and the warm is very orange so it is nice that you get those two extremes so if you find a little bit of the middle you can get an even kind of stone color and then it will be a very nice experience going into the glow light menu you can change it to auto now there's no light sensor on the unit itself it strictly goes by whatever time of day it is and it won't be automatically adjusted you will have to go to the time down below here and choose what time it's going to be. It doesn't use the international clock or anything like this. It'll be the time on the unit itself. The Barnes & Noble Nook Glowlight 4 is simple. There's no large screen, no note taking, no wireless charging, no speakers. It's meant for e-reading. It's an e-reader. That is all. This can be considered a throwback to the early 2010s, prioritizing reading above anything else, while still keeping in tune with the modern conveniences that we all look for in an ebook device. The Barnes & Noble Nook Glowlight 4 isn't going to make you say, wow, but we're glad Barnes & Noble is still very much a part of the game. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.